Why wasn't fixing the tax code job one instead of repeal and reform Obamacare? If, I mean, that's what the country wants. The country wants growth. And the way to get growth is cut taxes and stimulate the economy. Why wasn't well, it there, job one? Important though it is, and I'm sure meaningfully important to so many Republicans, it's not as important as tax cuts. It's not as important to goosing this economy, giving it a pickup because things are slowing down. And, a, and this should not be the signature lead-off event for Republicans. No, I'll tell you what. I'm pretty sure Donald Trump, our president, watches Fox Business because guess what? After Stewart and Neil repeatedly called uh, out this need for tax reform, what do you know? The president announced it's coming. Take a listen. Lowering the overall tax burden on American business is big league. That's coming along very well. We're going to be announcing something, I would say, over the next um, two or three weeks that will be phenomenal. Phenomenal. You know what? The markets loved it, right? Yes, they yes. absolutely loved it. Take yes. a look. We've got a weekly chart we can show you here of the Dow. That's when President Trump made those comments. You see that? It took off just like a rocket. All right, but don't think that everybody's in agreement here. We're joined now by the former director of the Office of Management and Budget under President Ronald Reagan and author of the book Trumped, our friend David Stockman. David, the market wanted the president to talk about tax reform. He did. The market rallied. The what did the market miss? <laughs> but the market is delusional by the hour. Uh, <laughs> what's happening is, as I predicted, ahead of schedule. The White House is already a political train wreck. Capitol Hill has erupted into vicious partisan warfare. Uh, the administration is distracted with this ridiculous immigration ban. The economic... But the president, the tax said, but David, but the he, president he, he, said he's going to deliver a yeah. tax <laughs> cut across the board corporate, yeah, right. personal, and he's going to do it imminently. Well, that, that's a fond hope. He may send up a press release, but it's going to take them months to put together a detailed 10-year budget plan to do all the forecasts and all of the analysis, and without that, they're not going so, to so get a budget. So tell me you think that breakdown's going to happen. Is that Paul Ryan and company? Is it sort of the status quo, conservative Republicans that are going to say, look, we can't afford this, whereas Donald Trump and his supporters are saying, hey, we need to do this. We need to grow the economy. <laughs> And then you can afford it? Well, of course we do, but he's inheriting a $10 trillion built-in deficit over the next 10 years, which what CBO put out last week. He wants to raise defense by over a trillion dollars. His generals, the only part of his government that he has confirmed, are up there running around doing that. The debt ceiling, which has been suspended, is going to go back into effect March 15th at $20 trillion. And to do any of this, he's going to need to raise the debt ceiling by trillion and where are the votes going to come from? The Democrats aren't going to help. There is a large no, segment... Not that of many of them, though. Well, <laughs> there's a large segment of Republicans that will not vote for, you know, another 10 or 12 trillion worth of national debt on top of what we have already. In other words, Wall Street is talking about hopium aspirations. They're not looking at what's possible. And I want to tell you, and I know this sounds very negative, but nothing is possible in the mess that has uh, been created over 20 years in Washington. You know, this is just and what we were that, talking about uh, with Bob Diamond. I mean, yes. we, we asked this question. I mean, when you see Elizabeth Warren getting up there and, and quoting uh, Coretta King and, and, and all of the, uh, the, the fallout that happened this week there on Capitol Hill, the question is, yeah. is it going to impede the ability for lawmakers well, to get through some kind of meaningful tax reform? Yes, these are all distractions. But, that but was David, silly. D David, yeah. I respect you. Yeah. You know we've yeah. had a relationship yeah. for many, over many years. years. Yeah. But what is the stock market saying? I mean, I have to believe as an investor, I always had to believe as an investor, the stock market is smarter than any single individual. Yeah. The market likes it. The market has reacted very positively. Well, the why, market, why is that going to change? Because the market liked it in February 2000, and then it crashed 60%. The market liked what was going on in July and August of 2007, and then yeah, we had the great... He was ready with his answer on that no, one. No, no, yeah, but, yeah, yeah, but yeah. it's true. Yeah. In other words, we, the, they've inflated, and the problem is the Fed. They've inflated these bubbles. The markets are now on hinge. The shorts have been killed. There is no two-way trade in the market. It's just machines 
things, uh, reading the headlines and driving up the, the stock by a day or two, but then you get a black swan event. You suddenly what, get what a is your black swan event that's coming it's down? It's the, the realization that that Washington is totally dysfunctional, frozen. So you don't in, think any kind of tax reform no, is going to take no, place at all? Not, not, not like, this like year. Like not even okay. And, not not this year at all. Not this year. They're going to attempt it. You're, 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 you're thinking is they're going to attempt to do it, but when they bring it to the hill, it will never, it will That's never right, happen. Because you have to have what's called reconciliation instructions in order to avoid the filibuster 60 votes in the Senate. To get those instructions, you have to pass a budget resolution for fiscal 18 the next 10 years. That will have embedded in it under Trump's policy, because he doesn't want to cut Social Security or Medicare. He wants to raise defense. He wants to have infrastructure spending he wants to have big revenue reductions it will be over 10 trillion dollars and there aren't the votes to pass it now if you can't pass a budget resolution you have no instruction without an instruction you have a filibuster without uh, instruction you have the K Street lobbies eating alive the legislative process so well David on a, on a week that the markets reacted very favorably to uh, the talk about the yeah. fact that the tax cuts are imminent it's always refreshing to have another point of view. Uh, we thank you for sharing it with us again in terms of what you think is going to happen. So, David, great. great to see you again.